welcome back to looking at Hollywood. You know, I was just thinking about theatrical families, and the, the one that flashed on my mind was Ozzie, Harriet, Rick, and David. But we have one that's even stronger than that. You've all seen Cliff Arquette for years in so many wonderful features. And Louis Arquette, he's been in a million things. Well, we have Louis Arquette's son, who also happens to have a sister that you've seen in 3,000 things, Roseanne Arquette. This man, Alexis Arquette, who is our special guest today, is a performance artist and an actor. You've seen him in everything from Last Exit to Brooklyn to major TV shows. And now let's eavesdrop and see what he says to Skippy today. Uh, Alexis, um, family, show business. Yes. Grandfather. Mm. Mm. I knew him very well. Yeah. In Chicago, Illinois. Cliff Arquette. Uh-huh. Uh, let's go back as a child. Do you mm -hmm. remember him? Absolutely. Well, I remember him, more importantly, uh, from his TV appearances, which, of course, he had the quintessential grandfather costume. Right. So, I mean, you can imagine he was everyone's, you know, idea of a grandfather, perfect grandfather, which he was. Was he? Absolutely. Uh, we'd go and visit him in Gettysburg at his um, museum, which he had a Civil War museum, uh -huh. which was fascinating for me as a kid, you know, just getting to play with old, you know, uniforms. Uniforms and swords and guns and things was, you know, great for a kid, so. Are you into uniforms and guns and all that? Now? Um, nowadays, but only in the bedroom. Just kidding. <laughs> <laughs> okay. But um, bum <clears throat> Tell me, you just finished a film right now. Mm hmm What was it? Oh, I just finished a film this week called Threesome with um, Stephen Baldwin and Laura Flynn Boyle. Mm -hmm. But that's just a, sort of a little comedy. I just got back from New Zealand doing a, doing a, a pretty big feature called Jack Be Nimble, which is... Um, uh, sort of, I don't want to say incestuous, but ambiguous love story about a brother and a sister and psychic dramas that, that they encounter. And you like that kind of a role? I do, because it's, I, I can look at you and I can see you like that kind well, of Well, I, 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 <laughs> I'm attracted to the, um, sort of, the, the different in, in, in America and things that are sort of out, out of the norm, you know. Did your family, your father is an actor, a director, producer, your dad, L mm -hmm. Louis mm -hmm. Arquette, uh, did he encouraged you, did someone encourage you into the business or are you just? Absolutely not. They, in fact, he, um, he said to us, it's a very difficult business. Um, you might want to think of going into another line of business. I've had a very hard time supporting uh, a large family, uh, you know, with money. How large money. was it? Well, it was five kids, oh. um, so. Was it difficult for your dad to support your family? I, I think, I mean, he always did it well. I mean, we were never broke to the point where we couldn't have things that, you know, American uh -huh. kids expect. You know, we were sort of spoiled in that way, but, um, you know, I'm sure it wasn't easy. You grew up here in Hollywood? I grew up here in Hollywood after, you know, I was nine. I mean, before then, we were living in a commune, so. Uh -huh. So that was very in different. Commune. In a commune. Was it fun? It was fun. I mean, it's not like the communes you imagine where it's free love and stuff. I mean, it was, it was very spiritual. It was very sort of, s not strict, but it wasn't like as laid back as the other ones you'd imagine. So, you know, I mean, I learned a lot about. Where did you go to school? I went to school. Where did I go to school? You mean college no, or high school? Uh, high school? High school in Pasadena at a private school. Did you? Uh -huh. Yeah. What made you decide to get in the business? Huh? Um, I don't know. I mean, I just, I guess I'm a pretty good liar and I like to, um, <laughs> you know, I like to embellish and I like to be believed even when I'm not telling the truth. Did you study acting? Are you still studying or what? Um, no, I'm not. And I don't, I, don't think that, I don't think that people should feel that they need to unless they... they I like that. Unless they, they're afraid of, of uh -huh. something and they don't feel comfortable yet. Because, I mean, stage and film is all about being comfortable and being so comfortable that things seem real. So if you don't feel comfortable, yeah, you should be in school. But Alexis is comfortable on stage then? I'm comfortable With anywhere, the baby. Really? <laughs> oh, yeah. When you walk into a room, you're very... You, Absolutely. You take over what uh -huh. you feel, huh? Mm -hmm. Sure. Really? You know, strip off my clothes and not feel uncomfortable about that. Not saying that I would, but I'm just saying that, you know, to break down these barriers is important. Your sister, are you very close with your Rosanna? We've become much closer in the past five years, yeah. What do you mean, like, uh, well, you, know, you weren't she close was, before? Well, she's a lot older than me. You know, she's 32 and I'm 23 now, uh -huh. so, so there's a bit of a space in there. So uh, now I'm at the point where she can deal with me as an adult and, you know, Vice versa. So we hang out and have a lot of good fun, good times. She comes to my clubs and stuff. Uh -huh. Clubs. You you uh, work clubs around town, don't yeah. you? Yeah. It's fun. Isn't I it? do a Tuesday night club called Click, and I do a Wednesday night club called Meet, uh -huh. and I do various special events like this Friday um, with Jackie Beat. I'm doing the Warhol Ball, which is the Warhol Legend Ball, which is sort of an homage to Warhol and everything that he was and everyone that came out of him. 
You never met Andy, did you? I've um, never met Andy Warhol myself, no. I must you, would you have loved to have met him? Would have loved to have spoken to him, yeah. Why all the young kids wanted to meet Andy Warhol? Well, because there was, uh, whether or not you believe that he was a true artist or that he created something important, mm -hmm. he was in the public eye and he, you know, was very, a lot of attention was, was given to him, so. What do the young kids your age, 23, right now, are thinking of? Is there another Andy Warhol out there? Well, um, Is there? I don't think so. A lot of people are, are going back to sort of Timothy Leary and his teachings. He's back. The whole thing about, you know, every, every reality is only an opinion, I think is very prevalent and it's very important to remember. Uh -huh. But I don't think that there's any sort of um, pioneers right now of their age limit. I mean, some, but, you know. Who do you look up to right now? Right now, who do I Alexis, look up to? Alexis, 23, 22. Come oh, on. I don't know. People on the outskirts, you probably wouldn't know. I mean, I, like, some of my heroes are like Jello Biafra. Do you know who he is? He was in a, a punk band for years, and now he's a political activist. You I like, I like political people activists? that stick their necks out. If they have, Take if, risk, they do, like if they do it with humor, if they do it with, if, if they hmm? interest you and they captivate <laughs> you, there's nothing worse than boring rhetoric. You know so, Alexis I mean? is very humorous. You like humor things. Absolutely. That's what makes it. Absolutely. Everything. This film you brought, the clip. I like to see this clip you brought. It's, it's, uh, it's from... It's very interesting. Wait, it is? Wait, what is well, it It's from? from a film called Jumpin' at the Boneyard, which is a Fox film with Lawrence Kasdan produced mm -hmm. it, who directed Grand Canyon, of course. And it's about two brothers dealing with crack abuse in, in the Bronx. It's now on video. So. Oh, let's see it. Let's see it. Annie? Click it, honey. Hit it, girl. You've been doing yourself the last three years. You've done a lot of things. Yeah. Like what? Come on, Manny. You know what I've been doing? I'm having enough trouble as it is just hanging on from two a moon. You thought about getting him any help? I thought maybe by coming back here, I could shake him up a little. Look at that kid. I'm too sure it's working out, though. What you looking for? I'm not looking for nothing. All right, man, you don't want to do business with me, that's fine. Your boy here looks like he wants to do some business. How much you suffer? Uh, you still see that girl, Cassie? No. You don't come here without me knowing. You don't come and see him shut without me knowing. Shut your mouth for a minute so I can say something. Don't tell me to shut up. You always make everything sound so easy. I'm not saying it's easy. I'm just saying, if you want to do this, I can beat it with you. You believe anything that fool ass tells you, don't you? Don't you just relax, right? I can't just run off with you and leave or not. Not without telling her. Damn it, Danny, I don't know if we're going to do this. You're gonna be all alone, Daddy. Nobody but you. That's my daddy today. Wait, what are you saying? In the, in the scene with you? That would be Tim Roth. He's an English actor, um, famous in Europe and becoming famous in America. He's very good. He reminds excellent. me of Midnight Cowboy a little. This Gritty kind scene. of thing, yeah. Yeah. It's like the under underbelly of society, which, you know, not a lot of people see. Mm. Um, it's kind of not an easy film to watch, you know. Most people are regular in their seats, you know, but um, it was a good opportunity to work with some great actors and director. You wear clubs a lot, uh -huh. but you, you, you do a lot of film work. Mm -hmm. You do vo voiceover studio. Mm -hmm. You do voiceovers. Mm. You keep yourself busy, don't you? Absolutely. Uh, you do all these for, but this drag thing you're doing, <gasps> town, tell me about Skippy, what? That's the clip I was talking <laughs> a what <thing>? about. <laughs> a drag is it? Thing? What is it? Uh, what Performance is it? artist. Go ahead. Wait, I want to know. <laughs> drag. Uh, you, know, you know what drag means, don't you? I don't know what drag, drag. means. Drag. D-R period, A period, G period. It right. was originated by Shakespeare. Dressed as girl. Oh, is that what it means? It doesn't mean a character, oh. a male character who's playing a female character. It means a male character who becomes dressed as a woman within right. the story. Right, right. So it was, so to be called a drag queen, you're basically being called Shakespearean royalty. Oh, so I, I take it as a compliment and, <laughs> and, you know, at any chance somebody can call me. How long does it take you to make up? 
Um, depending into... on what look I'm going for, if I'm going for a natural girl, if she looked like a normal woman, it would only take 40 minutes. But two hours for a nice sort of diva. I saw you the other look. night. I was coming from some I had a fat fiesta or something, and you were dashing out of your car, and and, well, was I, I, and I, you were in this wonderful attire of this women's clothes. Oh, yeah. I couldn't believe how beautiful you looked. Great were you, legs. Were you, great. Were you excited, Skippy? <laughs> yeah, I was. Were well, you a little yeah. excited? Yeah. Wait till you see the clip. Now, Skippy, let me Wait, ask you something. Go ahead. Have you ever done drag, Skippy? Never. Oh, Oh, you would be beautiful. <laughs> you would be knocked down, drag out I, gorgeous. You think so? Yeah. Really? In fact, okay. I stopped because I saw you in front of your sign, your, your yeah, little poster, right? And I, I said, I have got to get in this camera shot with you. Were Skip. wonderful. I, was, I thought you were great. Thank you. I couldn't believe the legs on him. Oh, oh, it was incredible. Thanks. Alexa, <laughs> tell me about. Let's show. Let's show that. Clip. I want to show that clip. Where was this, this oh, clip? You, this you is, were clubs all over. Tell yeah, me I were clubs. Now this is this was a benefit for a nursery school. Of oh, all things, really? if you can believe. And it was at the Grassy Knoll Book Depository, which is a show which I also did with Jackie B. Right. And my sister, Patricia, was the host. So there you go. This was the benefit for a nursery school? Yes, Annie. Let's show that clip. Oh, let's see. Point. Okay. Okay, <laughs> folks. <laughs> Alexis Gas. Well, I'm sorry about <laughs> that. that. What, what club was this at? That was at the Grassy Knoll, Grassy. which was the book depository. God, it's fun. It's yeah. God. So. You enjoy doing that, though. Huh? Well, sure. I Tell mean, me something. You know. I'm reading the, tr you know, I read uh, sometimes the Star, the Globes, and Only Inquire. Only in the supermarket. Supermarkets when I'm standing in line. That's yeah, right. Like the rest of the ladies. You don't pay for them, though, is you, Skippy? Not really. But tell me, Luke Perry. They're saying about Luke Perry Luke and... Who? Luke who? <laughs> Luke Perry and... Um, Alexis Arquette. Yes. It was just a big article. Mm. Is it true? You're living together? Absolutely not. Completely untrue, and uh, I'm sure that... I just want the world to know. It is not no, true. No, it is not true. How, I did mean, they, how did they get away with this? Well, they got away with it because, he, you know, when he first moved to L.A., um, he stayed with me and my family for a little while, and he dated my stayed sister. Stayed with your family. He stayed and? with my sister. I mean, that right. was the thing. Right, right. And... Um, 
you know, I mean, we became good friends. And, you know, recently he came by to, with a chainsaw to cut down some trees in the backyard. And I guess someone saw him there and assumed him doing yard work would mean that he lived there. And they assumed you doing drag work. And that's between well, that and that. And it's they also, they thought it was a thing? Yeah. Yeah, oh they thought God. it was just the thing. Would you believe? Well, it's frustrating to me <laughs> because, I mean, they say transvestite lover, blah, blah, blah. You know, and the truth of the matter is, hey, I'm an actor, okay? I can, I can do any damn character I want. Absolutely. With woman, man, whatever. Absolutely. That does not mean I'm a sexual deviant. Absolutely. And sexual deviant doesn't mean you're a bad thing either. I mean, deviant comes from devia. Right, right, Off right. of the road, someone who takes a different path. Can you know? festival, come on. Can film festival. Are you going? I'm going, buddy. Ooh. I'm going to... For this, for this particular... No, uh, not for this film. For, for a, a film I did in New Zealand called Jack Be Nimble. Uh -huh. And I'm um, going there, and my sister is going to be there. So who's, gonna, be, who's in the film with you? Um, uh, it's all New Zealand actors. New Zealand, uh -huh. So I'm doing, I'm doing the red carpets with Rosanna, which will be fun because... You and Rosanna together. I mean, they love her there. She walks down there, you know, it's like, oh, Rosanna! You know, they uh -huh. love her, so uh -huh. it'll be fun. I'll just hang out. And First time in Europe for you? No, absolutely not. You've been there many times. Mm, yes, yeah. as a sex slave for numerous of Turkish <laughs> um, dignitaries. <laughs> Alexis, humor. Great humor. Great. I love it. You like to sing? Absolutely. <laughs> sing and dance and carry it on, right? Absolutely. I really enjoyed the show today with hey, you. I it was really nice had a good time. Skippy. Nice to meet It was great okay. to meet Alexis. Okay. Isn't it great? Yeah. Good. Thank you. Okay. Show some more skin, hon. Black it out. Okay. Out. I right, who do you look up to right now? Right now, who do I Alexis, look up to? Alexis, 23, 22. Come oh, on. I don't know. People on the outskirts, you probably wouldn't know. I mean, like, like some of my heroes are like Jello Biafra. Do you know who he is? He was in a, a punk band for years, and now he's a political activist. I like, I like people that stick activists? their necks out. If they have, to, if, risk, they do, like, if they do it with humor, if they do it with, if they, if they hmm? interest you and they captivate you, there's nothing worse than boring rhetoric. You know. So what Alexis I mean? is very humorous. You like humor things. Absolutely. That's what makes it. Absolutely. Everything. Yeah. This film you brought, the clip. I like to see this clip you brought. It's it's. Uh, it's from, very interesting. Wait, it is. Wait, what is it? Well, it's from? from a film called Jumping at the Boneyard, which is a Fox film with Lawrence Kasdan mm -hmm. produced it, who directed Grand Canyon, of course, and it's about. Two brothers dealing with crack abuse in in the Bronx. It's now out on video. So. Oh, let's see. Let's see, Annie. Click it, honey. Hit it, girl. <laughs> You've been doing yourself the last three years. I've done a lot of things. Yeah. Like what? Come on, Manny. You know what I've been doing? This is your family now! To be honest with you, I'm having enough trouble as it is just hanging on from two or more. You thought about getting him any help? I thought maybe by coming back here, I could shake him up a little. Look at that kid. Welcome back to Looking at Hollywood. You know, I was just thinking about theatrical families, and the, the one that flashed on my mind was Ozzy, Harriet, Rick, and David. But we have one that's even stronger than that. You've all seen Cliff Arquette for years in so many wonderful features. And Louis Arquette, he's been in a million things. Well, we have Louis Arquette's son, who also happens to have a sister that you've seen in 3,000 things, Roseanne Arquette. This man, Alexis Arquette, who is our special guest today, is a performance artist and an actor. You've seen him in everything from Last Exit to Brooklyn to major TV shows. And now let's eavesdrop and see what he says to Skippy today. 
uh, Alexis, um, family, show business. Yes. Grandfather. Mm. Mm. I knew him very well. Yeah. In Chicago, Illinois. Cliff Arquette. Uh-huh. Uh, let's go back as a child. Do you mm -hmm. remember him? Absolutely. Well, I remember him, more importantly, uh, from his TV appearances, which, of course, he had the quintessential grandfather costume. Right. So, I mean, you can imagine he was everyone's, you know, idea of a grandfather, perfect grandfather, which he was. Was he? Absolutely. Uh, we'd go and visit him in Gettysburg at his um, museum, which he had a Civil War museum, uh -huh. which was fascinating for me as a kid, you know. Just getting to play with old, you know, unif uniforms and swords and guns and things was, you know, great for a kid, so. Are you into uniforms and guns and all that? Now? Um, nowadays, but only in the bedroom. Just kidding. <laughs> <laughs> okay. But I'm fun. Tell me, you just finished a film right now. Mm hmm What was it? Oh, I just finished a film this week called Threesome with um, Stephen Baldwin and Laura Flynn Boyle. Mm -hmm. But that's just a, sort of a little comedy. I just got back from New Zealand doing a, doing a, a pretty big feature called Jack Be Nimble, which is um, a sort of, I don't want to say incestuous, but ambiguous love story about a brother and a sister and psychic dramas that, that they encounter. And you like that kind of a role? I you? do, because it's... I, I can think look at you and I can see you like that kind well, of Well, I, 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 I'm attracted to the... Um, sort of the, the different in, in, in America and things that are sort of out, out of the norm, you know. Did your family, your father is an actor, a director, producer, your dad, L mm -hmm. Louis mm -hmm. Arquette, uh, did he encourage Absolutely. you to take over what uh -huh. you feel, huh? Mm -hmm. Sure. Really? You know, strip off my clothes and not feel con uncomfortable about that. Not saying that I would, but oh. I'm just saying that, you know, to break down these barriers is important. Your sister, are you very close with your Rosanna? We've become much closer in the past five years, yeah. What do you mean, like, uh, well, you, know, you weren't she close was, before? Well, she's a lot older than me. You know, she's 32 and I'm 23 now, uh -huh. so, so there's a bit of a space in there. So uh, now I'm at the point where she can deal with me as an adult and, you know, vice versa. So we hang out and have a lot of good, fun, good times. She comes to my clubs and stuff. Uh -huh. Clubs? You, you uh, work clubs around town, don't yeah. you? Yeah. It's fun, isn't I it? I do a Tuesday night club called Click, and I do a Wednesday night club called Meet. Uh -huh. And I uh, do various special events like this Friday um, with Jackie Beat. I'm doing the Warhol Ball, which is the Warhol Legend Ball, which is sort of an homage to Warhol and everything that he was and everyone that came out of him. You never met Andy, did you? I've um, never met Andy Warhol myself, was, no. I must you, would you have loved to have met him? Would have loved to have spoken to him, yeah. Why all the young kids wanted to meet Andy Warhol? Well, because there was, uh, whether or not you believe that he was a true artist or that he created something important, mm -hmm. he was in the public eye and he, you know, was very, a lot of attention was, was given to him, so. What do the young kids your age, 23, right now, are thinking of? Is there another Andy Warhol out there? Well, um, Is there? I don't think so. A lot of people are, are going back to sort of Timothy Leary and his teachings. He's back. The whole thing about, you know, Every, every reality is only an opinion, I think is very prevalent and it's very important to remember. Uh -huh. But I don't think that there's any sort of um, pioneers right now of their age limit. I mean, some, but, you know. Encouraged you? Did someone encourage you into the business, or are you just... Absolutely not. They, in fact, he, um, he said to us, it's a very difficult business. Um, you might want to think of going into another line of business. I've had a very hard time supporting uh, a large family, uh, you know, with How large money. Was it? Well, it was five kids, uh -huh. um, so. Was it difficult for your dad to support your family? I, I think, I mean, he always did it well. I mean, we were never broke to the point where we couldn't have things that, you know, American uh -huh. kids expect. You know, we were sort of spoiled in that way. But, um, you know, I'm sure it wasn't easy. You grew up here in Hollywood? I grew up here in Hollywood after, you know, I was nine. I mean, before then, we were living in a commune, so. Uh -huh. So that was very different. Commune. In a commune. Was it fun? It was fun. I mean, it's not like the communes you imagine where it's free love and stuff. I mean, it was, it was very spiritual. It was very sort of... Not strict, but it wasn't like as laid back as the other ones you'd imagine. So, you know, I mean, I learned a lot about. Where did you go to school? I went to school. Where did I go to school? You mean college? No, or high, school? Uh, high school. High school in Pasadena at a private school. Did you know? Uh -huh. Yeah. What made you decide to get in the business? Huh? Um, I don't know. I mean, I just, I guess I'm a pretty good liar, and I like to, um, <laughs> you know, I like to embellish, and I like to be believed, even when I'm not telling the truth. Did you study acting? Are you still studying, or what? Um, no, I'm not, and I don't. I don't think that. I don't think that people should feel that they need to, unless they. they I like that. Unless they, they're afraid of, of uh -huh. something, and they don't feel comfortable yet, because I mean, stage and film is all about being comfortable and being so comfortable that things seem real. So if you don't feel comfortable, yeah, you should be in school. But Alexis is comfortable on stage. Then. I'm comfortable with anywhere, the baby. Really? Oh yeah. When you walk <laughs> in her room, you're very. 